Can you manage state in React without the useState hook? Of course you can. Let me introduce you to the useReducer hook. Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. Today we're going to look at the React hook useReducer and why it's a better choice for managing complex state in React than the useState hook. Let's get started. On the left, I've got Visual Studio Code, and on the right, I've got a React application that uses three different pieces of state. We can see this here on the left in Visual Studio Code. We've got input state, account state, and a color state. So if I type in the input, it shows up here on the page. If we use the increment button or the decrement button, then it changes our number, and we can click color to toggle the color of the text. So now you can see the number, and the text input that's output to the page turn to the color yellow or gold, something like that, or we can turn it back to white, either one. So that's what we've got, a very simple functional component, but we've got at least three pieces of state. Now, if we wanted to pass these pieces of state down as props, and we wanted to change them inside of a child component, we'd actually be passing down six things already, because we have each piece of state and then the setter for each one. Use reducer can make that much simpler, although it takes just a little more to learn how to use it. And of course, this is a simple example overall of complex state, but your app could grow or you could have a much more complex app that has many pieces of state, and that's when the actual benefits of use reducer really kick in. So what we're going to do is switch this over to use reducer instead of use state. We'll do it one piece of state at a time though. So at first we'll have both use state and use reducer. I'll import use reducer here at the top. Okay, now above our use state hooks, I'll go ahead and put the reducer. And here we start out with state. And if we were just using one piece of state, like count is the first one I'll do, we could call it count if we wanted to, but I'm going to go ahead and call it state because that's what we'll eventually have. And, and of course, it could be named something else, but this is the standard or the traditional way of doing it. The next thing we put here instead of a setter is called dispatch. Now this word really means send. I don't use it when I'm talking to people. If I say I'm going to send something instead of dispatching a message, I say I'm sending a message. However, I like the word here because then it makes me think of this, exactly this use reducer hook. I'm going to dispatch an action is what we will be sending. So we will be sending an action with dispatch, if you want to remember it that way. And now I'm going to set this equal to the use reducer hook. Now, as the name of the hook indicates, it's going to use a reducer function. So that is traditionally called reducer. We'll pass in and we'll define that function in just a minute. But we start with some initial state. And again, if it was just count, maybe we would just have zero here, but then we would just go ahead and use the use state hook, right? So we're going to do this with an object because this will allow us to put all of our pieces of state in the use reducer. So here I'm going to put count and put the initial state value at zero for now. So we'll go ahead and remove this count and set count. We'll change everything else with that. But before we change anything in the JSX, we need to define the reducer. Now this could be defined in a separate file and imported. I'm just going to define it right here above. So we'll start out with const reducer, and then this takes in our state, and then it also takes in the action that is dispatched. So that's where the action will go from the dispatch. And now with the reducer, we use a switch statement. You could use other conditional logic, but this is the way you usually see it. So you have a switch and we'll have the action dot type. And there's a reason we put the action type, well, in the type property, instead of just storing it in action. We're going to have another property we access here in a little bit for the action as well. And now for the switch statement, we need to put in our cases that will impact our count state that we have right now, and that is increment. We'll just put the string increment, and let's go ahead and return here, and we need to return an object and we'll at least have the count, and we're going to access the current state, and then it's state.count to get the count value, and then just say plus one. And then after that, as you can imagine, decrement is very much the same, so I'm just going to highlight those two lines, press Shift-Alt and the down arrow, copy down, 
switch this string to decrement, and then the count will be state.count minus one. Now a reducer also usually has a default, as would a switch statement. And here, of course, you want to already know all the actions coming in. You shouldn't have any unexpected actions dispatched towards your reducer. But this is just in case you do, you're testing your application, you can throw an error, and then of course you'll find out if there is an action in there that you weren't expecting. So there we've defined our simple reducer that will at least handle the actions for our count state. Now we need to go down to the JSX and change a couple of things. Okay, scrolling down right now, I think, or at least I hope you can tell in my VS code that state and dispatch still don't have their full color here, it means they are not being used. So that's what we need to do. Inside the JSX to of course, put the value now on the page instead of just count, we need to say state.count and that will display that number for us. And now we won't be using set count here. Instead of set count, we use dispatch. And then instead of the function that we were sending to the set count, here we're going to set the type of action that we're taking. So this is the minus button, so it will get the decrement string. And now I'm just going to copy this once again and then highlight the set count that we have for increment, paste that in and switch the decrement action to increment. We can save that. Now let's go ahead and pull the app back up and see if everything is like we expect. And if I want to increment the number, it still works. Decrement the number, still works just fine. Our other use state is still working. And if we type in here, our state there for the input is still working. So of course you can have use state and use reducer in the same component, but there's really no need. So let's go ahead and now put the user input and the color states into the reducer as well. Let's start by setting their initial state. So we'll have user input, and that is starting out with an empty string, and then we'll have color, and that starts out with the Boolean data false. Now that we've set our initial state, we can get rid of the other instances of use state here. And then at the top, of course, we can also get rid of the use state import. Now let's go ahead and set our case for that input. And here let's look for new user input. That will be our action. And now we can return. Once again, if you're thinking I'm making a mistake, I'm doing it on purpose and then I'll talk about it. But once again, we need to define the value that we have. And now this is where we'll look at the other property that comes with action, and it is the payload. So here, the payload value is what we're passing in. And right now we haven't switched it to dispatch yet, but we're passing in the e.target.value as we get that text input typed into our input. So that's what will be passed in here as the action payload. It will be dispatched. So that is what we have there. Now, what I was talking about making a mistake, you would think that you could just come in and for the action, set the value of the action you're taking for the input or for the counter. But remember, this is all of our state now. So when I set the count, if I don't think about the user input, then I'm erasing the user input. Likewise, if I set the user input and don't think about the count, I'm erasing it. So now you might think this would be a pain if we have to take every piece of state, say we had 20 different states, if you had to type them all out. You don't have to, that would be bad. What you can do is use the spread operator to spread the state, and then you're spreading in all of the existing state and then you're writing over the one new property or the property that you're setting, you're writing over with new data. So that's how you wanna do this. So you spread the state and then overwrite the one property you're setting. So we can do the same thing with user input and then overwrite the user input there. So while we're here, let's go ahead and set the case for our toggle. And here we'll just call this TG color for toggle color. We're toggling that text color. So we'll return once again an object where we spread in the existing state and then we'll set the color and we want to set it to the opposite of what it was. And we do that with the exclamation mark to say 
If it was true, set it to false. If it was false, set it to true. Now let's scroll down to the JSX and make those other changes. So let's look for what we have. If we have user input that we're displaying, we need to say that is the state.userInput. So that is accurate. And then if we're displaying anything else, well here we're setting the color. Up here, let's look if we have a value for color. Here it is. So here we need to evaluate state.color in this ternary statement where we're deciding which color to make the text. So now let's once again change the setter here for set color to dispatch and we'll get rid of the function that we were passing into the set color function before. And here we'll once again set type. And this type is going to be TG color. That is the action we're taking or looking for inside of our reducer. So we can save that if you haven't, but we still need to change the set user input over to dispatch as well. So here this will be just a little bit different because we're passing in a parameter. Inside the dispatch we still need to set a type. So that's going to be type and then we said new user input I believe. And after that we need to set that payload property. And the payload property is our e.target.value. I believe we've made all the changes now. We've got a dispatch for our text input. We've got a dispatch for our color and where we're displaying everything on the page, whether it is state.count, state.userInput, or at least evaluating the state.color to determine which text color we're using. We have switched all of those correctly. So let's save everything now and our app should still be working as we expect it to. It says user input is not defined on line 36. So maybe I left one out. Yep, I was displaying it on the page and I hadn't scrolled down. State.user input, switch that on line 36. Let's go back to that application and try it one more time. Looks like it's going to work. Let's try the user input. Hey there, that's fine. Increment, decrement, can we toggle the color? Yes, it's a white color now. Toggle it back to the gold or yellow. And our state is still working as we expect it to. So that is how to apply one use reducer instead of multiple pieces of state. So the added benefit where before I said you would have to pass down each piece of state and each setter, so you're already passing down six things. Here, you're just passing down the dispatch. And then of course you have to take the appropriate action as well. Let's look at one extra step that's not required, but I have definitely seen people do this, and I know why it helps. It helps because you can use dot notation and not have a, a misspelling or something in all the different actions you may be typing for the dispatch. So let's define a constant named action here in all caps, like a true constant, if you're familiar with other programming languages. JavaScript, of course, handles constants a little differently when it comes to objects and arrays because we could still change properties. Here we're not going to, but now let's set one called increment in all caps, and that will be the increment string. You just want to make sure you spell it correctly here. Let's do the same for decrement. And then we can have another action named new underscore user underscore input. And here we'll type that string we're looking for, new user input. And then finally, we'll have tg underscore color, and we'll put that to that tg color string we're looking for in the reducer as well. So now we've created this action object. The benefit here is you can avoid typos because if you have imported this action object and you could actually store it, say, in the same file as your reducer if you didn't define it just up above your functional component uh, and then import it, because now when we take an action, let's come down here where we have one of our dispatches. So our type here, instead of just new user input, we can get rid of that. We could type action and then I can type dot and there, there's new user input. No typos now. We don't have to type incre increment, which is a word that I don't use that often either and worry about having a typo somewhere. So that at least allows us to use dot notation and kind of standard. So all we have to do is put action dot and we get the rest. So here for the type, let's go ahead and switch it to the decrement. And then here we can do increment. Ah, there we go. Action dot increment. And then down here, 
we need an action.tg color. There it is in the list. Did we miss anything? I think we've got every dispatch now. So let's go ahead and save again and just make sure everything is working as we expect it to. And if we type hey there or get rid of hey there, all looks good. Type my name, it's fine. Increment, decrement, toggle the color. All good. So that is use reducer. And you can see how handy this could actually be as your state gets more complex and you don't have to micromanage each little piece of state. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day and let's write more code together very soon.